I'm Tyler Suters here in the Energy News Center. This week brought the NARUK winter meetings to Washington, D.C., and among those invited to speak and discuss transmission and distribution issues at NARUK is Bob Gilligan with GE Energy. He joins us now for a wide-ranging discussion. Bob, it's great to have you with hey, us. It's great to be here. I want to start by quoting you to yourself, okay, <laughs> if that's fair to do. And this comes in the context of your assertion that global energy consumption is projected to triple by the year 2050. And I have you on record as saying with a worldwide initiative to increase energy efficiency, control demand, add renewable generation, we can deliver the solutions to meet the needs of our growing cities. What are those solutions in your mind and what are the policies that need to be in place to make those solutions realities? Yeah, there, well, first of all, we feel very strongly that it's important that consumers become more engaged in the discussion about their energy use mm -hmm. and how they can save energy. Conservation is the most cost-effective way for us to address our energy future. So if we as consumers have more information delivered by smart meters about our energy use profile, we feel that we'll make better decisions. It really sounds, Bob, as if you're describing the spark grid in and of itself in terms of better efficiency, better informed consumers. Uh, I assume sending a price signal is in there as well. Yeah, well, we think that that's an important element. It does cost more to generate and deliver energy at certain times of the day than it does others. And if we as consumers are made aware of that, we'll make better decisions about whether we can afford to use that energy when it's cheaper. One of the reasons consumers are becoming more aware of the grid and what a smart grid can offer is the expected rise in plug-in and hybrid electric vehicles. Yeah. Uh, with that in mind, you at GE announced the Plug Smart system uh, this week. It says the current infrastructure could power only 73 percent of vehicles off-peak as it is right now. Plug Smart could be a solution, correct? Well, actually, the fact that our existing infrastructure can support 73% of our vehicles being powered by electricity is great. And the idea is, let's take advantage of that infrastructure, use it at off-peak times to, to power the most vehicles possible. But the goal then is to include another 27%, correct? Eventually, mm -hmm. right. But, mm -hmm. but first, we'd like to be able to serve a large population of vehicles without having to expand the existing grid. What is PlugSmart offering then right now from a consumer standpoint? It, it, what they bring really is some of the technology around the smart charging algorithms, mm -hmm. the handshake between the utility and the automobile to ensure that we charge these, these vehicles in the smart way to get the most out of them and do it at a time of day when it's most cost effective for us as consumers. While we're talking about grid issues, the issue of interoperability standards has been front and center for many months now. Uh, back in September, Commerce Secretary Gary Locke made the announcement that NIST was bringing together many players and trying to come up with, with a system that will fit everyone. What is the status of the coordination efforts right now? Are you happy with the way things are moving forward? Yeah, very happy. You know, normally, the development of industry standards takes years. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do as an industry and as a regulatory body is facilitate an accelerated development of open standards. And by doing that, ensure that investments we make today are going to survive for the long term mm -hmm. and inviting competition because there'll be open standards for us to, to plug into. Energy Secretary Stephen Chu, a man who knows these issues extremely well even before he came into office, uh, proposed the idea of simply throwing all the players into a large room, locking them in there until everything gets worked out. Is that on a very basic level what's going on right now? Essentially. Mm -hmm. Essentially. You see industry competitors, you see uh, think tank participants, mm -hmm. you see technology groups all participating in the development of these standards, ensuring that we are creating an open playing field for the future. Mm -hmm. Final topic I'd like to address with you, Bob, has to do with renewable generation, getting yeah. new generation specifically onto the grid, dealing with t and D. I I know you're uh, especially well versed in that. What is the biggest hurdle to getting uh, these renewable sources online? Is it new transmission? That's certainly one of the issues. You know, for, for big wind projects, you have to get the power from where it's generated to where it's consumed. So transmission is an issue for, will become a constraint for deployment of wind. Mm -hmm. But for solar, the issue is more about distributed generation and the fact that you're going to have generating resources down at the consumer level. And now you're going to have two-way power flow within the grid, and you have to deal with that complexity. Mm -hmm. Can much of the issue be served by simply granting FERC the backstop siting authority that it's seeking right now? Is that a broad enough brushstroke that could take a number of these problems off the table? It certainly helps. It certainly helps. But when you have 
wind coming from one state and going to another state, and there are intervening states that need to be crossed, mm -hmm. you need to have the right incentive program for those states to want to participate. So we need to, to deal with the issue of states' rights. We have to deal with the issue of siting of that transmission and who pays for it. Mm -hmm. Does that mean it will forever be an issue of not in my backyard, either on a small or large scale? I think that will always be a part of the equation, that we're going to have to deal with that. And you know, it can be dealt with by, by having underground lines, but that's mm -hmm. a very expensive approach to the solution. Right. So we're, we're going to always contend with that, and that's why I think that distributed generation needs to be a part of the equation. All right. Bob Gillian is with GE Energy, where he is Vice President for Transmission and Distribution. Once again, Bob, thanks for taking time with us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here on Clean Skies News. I'm Tyler Sears.